If you're an intermediate skier or snowboarder looking for a huge ski resort with ample blue terrain that will take you more than a week to explore, then you're in the right place. Today, we're exploring Park City, the largest lift service ski resort in the United States, known for its exceptional overall mountain experience and old school mountain charm. Nestled on the eastern side of the Wasatch Mountains, Park City is a paradise for riders of all levels. But today, it's all about the intermediates, who we believe make up the largest percentage of the skiing and snowboarding public. We're going to tour the best intermediate terrain on both Park City and the Canyon side of the resort. So, strap yourself in. There's a lot of terrain to explore. Remarkably, 41% of the 341 trails that's 140 different marked trails, a graded blue for intermediate riders. That adds up to a whopping 105 kilometers or 65 miles of trails. We won't be covering every single trail, just our picks for the best intermediate terrain ponds, with lifts that service these zones and which ones we define as standout trails. If you want to learn more about Park City Mountain Resort, keep watching or check out our website, snowstash.com. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest adventures. First up, we're going to explore Park City Mountain. This area towers high above Park City Village and feels like what you can see from the base is just the start. The resort expands deep, deep back into the mountains from the moment you reach the summit of the Crescent Lift. The first zone we suggest to start your day of riding blues is the Payday Lift. This express lift provides access to 12 marked intermediate trails and they're always groomed to perfection, which is great to get those first turns of the day down. The lift is always busy in the morning as it's one of the main service lifts to the rest of the resort. But from mid morning onwards, the lines are relatively short. Payday Run would be our top pick here as it's long, fast, and has great views of the mountain base area and has a great consistent pitch. Next up is King Kong. This express lift that drops you at the top of the peak with another 12 intermediate trails. Yes, we are only onto the second lift at Park City and there are already 24 trails to choose from. As you ride the lift, it feels as though there are endless intermediate trails below you all waiting for you to give a go. Our top pick here is the King Kong Run. This is a fun trail that has ungroomed spots, which after some fresh snow can be an absolute blast. It does connect down to the Silver Load Base Zone, which has an amazing lodge and is your access point for the Quicksilver Gondola, which takes you over to the canyon side of the resort. After a few, or maybe 12 laps here, we recommend getting over to the Silver Load Lift. Once you're at the top, you'll now find yourself high into the mid-mountain zone of Park City. This is where the choices become endless. The good thing is that either way you choose, there's going to be a lift which takes you back to this mid-mountain zone for another lap on an intermediate trail. We recommend Parley's Park, a long intermediate trail that will take you some time to get down, but it does connect back to the Motherload Express Quad. This lift doesn't see quite the same cues as some of the others and is our top pick for some great lengthy blue laps. When you're finished with a few laps in these two lifts, we recommend getting off at mother load, go left, off the lift, and continue to flow left until you see the single jack run, which is a nice steep intermediate trail that connects you down to a zone called Thanes. This double lift has been lifting riders in this high alpine zone for nearly half a century and provides access to a few blue runs, specifically Keystone, which is a great trail that is sometimes groomed, sometimes not, but always provides great access to some amazing tree runs, which is a great introduction to tree riding without the advanced pitch found directly under the lift. From the summit of Thanes, you can do a few more laps or head over to McConkie's or begin the non-interrupted trail all the way back to the base. It's long, very long, and you can choose to jump from intermediate to beginner or back to intermediate. But when visiting Park City Mountain, we recommend it. It's a lot of fun. The canyon side of Park City Mountain feels like a whole other ski resort. Well, because prior to 2015, 
they were separate ski resorts, and then Vale purchased them both, built a huge gondola, and connected them as one. We recommend anyone who visits Park City take a ride on the Quicksilver Gondola. It's pretty breathtaking. The Canyons is our preferred resort out of the two. As it feels like it sees less traffic, there are more peaks along the ridgeline, which makes it feel like there are more terrain pods to spend a few hours in, and it's closer to Salt Lake City. When you drive to the Canyons Resort, you don't get stuck in the traffic that's all going down to Park City Village, and the parking at the base still remains free. Plus, the little open air gondola that takes you from the car park to the base of the resort is a good way to get that hype going in the morning. On first glance of the trail map, it appears like there are blue runs from left to right, which there are. However, this large zone right here, we wouldn't exactly call an intermediate terrain pod. The area is known as the Colony, which is an ultra luxe residential zone packed full of houses that range from 10 mil all the way through to 50 mil. Not exactly the common folk who are exploring Park City with their epic passes. The endless intermediate trails are mostly cat tracks that weave in and out around these billionaire mansions. Not a place to fill your edges and perfect your turns, but we do recommend doing a few laps through this zone as these houses really need to be seen to be believed. Okay. This is not a real estate channel. Back to the intermediate trails that are on offer at Canyons Park City. On the left hand side of the trail map, you'll find the Iron Mountain Express. This lift offers nearly 1,500 feet of vertical, with every major trail on the face being wide and having the perfect pitch for intermediate riders. We found this zone never really gets busy, likely because it's rather remote from the rest of the resort. The one downside is that it is at a lower elevation and will close down earlier in spring than some of the other high areas. Speaking of higher zones, if you zigzag down from the Iron Mountain Express to the White Pine Trail, you'll find the Dreamcatcher lift. A rather slow fixed grip quad which climbs a further 1,500 feet higher into the back of the resort. And whilst the terrain directly below the chair is all challenging advance runs, if you head right from the summit of the chair, you'll find a further 13 intermediate trails waiting for you to explore. At top picks here are the Alpine Glow and Apparition, which all connected and offer top to bottom riding. Or you can take one of the cat tracks that weave down through this zone, or hop off the edge of the cat track and get into the trees with all these trails connecting back again and taking you back to the base of the Dreamcatcher lift. Back over in the central part of the Canyons Resort, we recommend checking out the Saddleback Express, which might actually be one of our favorite lifts at the resort. As it's located at a higher elevation, it means the snow is better and there are around 20 different intermediate and advanced trails to choose from. A very, very lappable chair which is a great place to start and spend your morning. From the top of the chair, if you head left, you'll find a long, wide groomers that sweep back to the front of the zone, which also allows for some amazing views as you connect your turns. Heading right from the top of the chair provides access to four trails, as well as all the trees that connect between the runs. It's worth noting that these runs all connect to the top of the busiest beginner zone at the Canyons Resort, so if you've picked up a bit of speed on those intermediate trails, you'll need to be ready to hit the brakes as you connect with riders who are still learning how to ride. The final intermediate terrain pod at the Canyons Resort is accessible from the Orange Bubble Express and the Sun Peak Express. The two main trails can be found on the main face of this zone, which are named Eclipse and Echo, and both offer just over 1,000 vertical feet with a consistent pitch that's brilliant for intermediate riders. Off the Orange Bubble Express, you can exit at a midway point, continue forward, and you'll find Boomer and Broken Arrow. These will connect you back down to the base of the Sun Peak Express. Or head under the chair, go left or go right, and take on the main bowl, which towers over the canyon's base village, and is home to another eight different blue trails to try out. Again, 
very lappable and an incredible experience. Now, we haven't exactly covered every single intermediate trail that's available at Park City Mountain Resort, and that's simply because we haven't explored them all. We were there for eight days. We did explore all of the mountain, but it's just so large. What's your favorite intermediate trail at Park City? Tell us your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, feel free to check out Park City along with plenty of other great ski resorts from Utah, North America, and across the world on our website, snowstash.com.